We've built plenty of heroes on this channel, now it's time to build an anti-hero. We're building Frank Castle, aka the Punisher, in D&D. Because this is D&D Builds, where we have an outlet to make all sorts of ridiculous Dungeons and Dragons characters and stop driving the people in our lives insane with them. Frank Castle is a US Marine who served multiple tours, he's super well trained, and then after he got back, he had to witness the absolutely terrible tragedy of seeing his whole family killed in front of him. So we're going to try and follow that general concept with this build. First things first, we got to pick a race, and of course, we're going to go with Variant Human. This allows us to pick up a feat, and we're going to grab Gunner, because with Punisher, you gotta use some guns. This allows you to be proficient with firearms, be able to use them at close range, ignore the loading property, and gives you a plus one to your dexterity. You also get to choose one skill by being a human variant, and we're just gonna grab survival because that's fitting for Frank Castle. We already mentioned he was a marine, so we're gonna grab soldier. This gives us skill proficiencies in athletics and intimidation, and then we get to dive into some stats. We're gonna try and stay pretty true to character, and using point five from the player's handbook, we're gonna put 13 into strength, get another plus one for being a human variant, put 15 into dexterity because that's what you need when you're firing at long range and Frank Castle is one hell of a sniper. Then we get an additional plus one from our gunner feat and then when it comes to our constitution we'll put 13 points in there and then get another plus one from being a human variant. We have a handful of points left over so we're going to bring our intelligence and our wisdom up to 12 allowing us to completely dump our charisma because Frank Castle is definitely not known for being warm and cuddly. Now it's time to choose a starting class. Class. Like I mentioned, he is super well trained, and the best trained martial combatant in D&D 5th edition is going to be a fighter. When you choose fighter at first level, you get access to all armor, shields, all weapons, and you get saving throws and strength and constitution. Then you have to choose two skills. So we'll pick up Perception and Insight, because you know how to pull off being a good sniper, and those seem like good skills to have as one. Then at first level of fighter, you get access to a fighting style, and we're going to pick Archery. So that way, when you are firing with those guns, you get a plus two to your accuracy. Additionally, at first level of fighter, you get access to Second Wind. So as a bonus action, you can regain hit points equal to 1d10 plus your fighter level. Then at second level of fighter, you get access to Action Surge, so you can take two actions on a single turn. And then at third level, you get a martial archetype, otherwise known as a subclass. And with the battle tactics that you've been trained to use, we're going to grab Battle Master. When you choose this subclass, you get Combat Superiority. So you can choose a few maneuvers, which are special type of battle tactics that you have access to as a Battle Master fighter. You can only choose three at this level, but you get more as you level up. You get to roll a superiority dice with most of these maneuvers, and you only have four dice to use at the moment, which you expend when you use those maneuvers. Right now, those dice are D8s, but those also level up as you level up in this subclass. As far as those maneuvers, the first one I'm going to choose is Precision Attack, so you get a bit more accuracy when you need it. Follow that up with Parry, so you can reduce any damage you might take. And then finally, Trip Attack, because that is a very tactical move to be able to pull off, because if you knock a creature prone using something like Trip Attack, you have advantage on any future attacks against that prone creature. And then finally, the last thing you get at this level from choosing this subclass is Student of War. So you gain proficiency with one type of artisan tools of your choice. We'll grab Tinkerer's Tools just because you tend to be able to tinker with more dangerous items. Then at 4th level of fighter, you get access to an ability score improvement. And instead of boosting any of those points, we're actually going to go ahead and take a feat. We'll choose Fighting Initiate, which allows us to choose another fighting style. And we'll grab Unarmed Fighting because we need to be able to pull off combat no matter the situation. This makes it so your unarmed strikes are now 1d6 plus your strength modifier, or 1d8 if you're not wielding any weapons in your hands. And at the start of each of your turns, you can deal an extra 1d4 bludgeoning damage to one creature grappled by you. Then at fifth level of fighter, you get the very important extra attack, which is one of the most important things you need as a martial type of class. Then at sixth level, we're actually gonna do a multi-class. We'll pretend that at this point in your character's evolution, you You've gone through the tragedy of losing your family, and that's gonna piss you off. So we're gonna take some levels in Barbarian. When you choose Barbarian at first level, you get access to Rage. So you can activate a Rage as long as you aren't wearing heavy armor, so we're gonna stick to mostly medium armor, which feels very fitting for the general bulletproof vest that you constantly see the Punisher wearing. And while that Rage is active, you have advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws. When you make melee weapon attacks using strength, 
You gain a bonus to the damage roll, which is a plus two, but it would go up if you leveled up enough in Barbarian. And you have resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage, just knowing that you can fight through the pain. Additionally, at first level of Barbarian, in case you're not wearing that body armor, you get unarmored defense, making it so your armor class equals 10 plus your dexterity modifier plus your constitution modifier. Then at second level of fighter, you get danger sense, you're just so aware of being in battle that you have the edge when it comes to dodging away from danger, giving you advantage on dexterity saving throws against things like traps and spells as long as you can see them. Additionally, at second level of fighter, you get reckless attack. So when you make the first attack on your turn, you can decide to attack recklessly, giving you advantage on melee weapon attack rolls as long as it's using strength. But this is called reckless attack because your enemies are also going to have advantage against you. Then at third level of Barbarian, you get a Primal Path, otherwise known as a subclass. And there's not a ton of great choices that fit thematically, but I do think that Frank Castle is really good at fighting through the hurt, and one of the best ways we can pull that off is by going with a Totem Warrior. When you choose a Totem Warrior at 3rd level of Barbarian, you gain the ability to cast Beast Sense and speak with animals, but only as rituals, and that doesn't really apply too much to this build. But more importantly, you get a Totem Spirit. So you can choose a Bear, Eagle, Elk, Tiger, or Wolf. We're going to choose a Bear. And this makes it so while you're raging, you don't just have resistance to a few types of damage, you have resistance to all damage except psychic and that kind of feels accurate considering the terrible trauma that you've gone through mentally but you're willing to fight through the physical pain then instead of taking fourth level in barbarian we're actually going to jump back over to fighter really drilling in on that battle focus that punisher has and by doing so we hit sixth level in fighter giving us another ability score improvement so we're going to make sure we boost up any sort of ranged attacks we have to worry about being a gunner and boost up our dexterity by two points. Then at seventh level of fighter, you get another feature from being a battle master, know your enemy. So if you spend at least one minute observing or interacting with a creature outside of combat, you can learn certain information about the capabilities of them, at least compared to yourself. So the dungeon master has to tell you if that creature that you're observing has equal to, superior, or inferior stats regarding two possible characteristics. So you can choose your strength score, dexterity, constitution, armor class, current hit points, total class levels, if any, or fighter class levels, if any. You also get to choose two more maneuvers at this level, and with that giant skull, painted on your chest, we're going to grab Menacing Attack. So when you hit a creature with a weapon attack, the creature has to make a Wisdom saving throw, and on a failed save, they're frightened of you until the end of their next turn. And then, just to get a bit more tactical, we'll grab Pushing Attack. So when you hit a creature with a weapon attack, you can expend one of those superiority die, add that to the damage, and if the creature is large or smaller, you have the chance to push it 15 feet away from you. Then at 8th level of Fighter, you get another ability score improvement, so we're going to make sure that you're a little better in hand-to-hand -hand combat, and you can utilize those Barbarian features a bit better by boosting your strength by 2 points. Then at 9th level of fighter, you get Indomitable. So if you fail a saving throw, you can actually re-roll it once per long rest. Then at 10th level of fighter, you get more features from being a battle master. You'll get to choose two more maneuvers, so we'll grab Grappling Strike so you can use that unarmed combat that much better, allowing you to grapple somebody as a bonus action, and we'll grab Brace, allowing you to use your reaction to get in one free hit against somebody once they move into your reach. Additionally, from being a battle master at 10th level, you get Improved Combat Superior. So your superiority dice actually upgrades from D8s to D10s. Then at 11th level of fighter, you get another extra attack. So now you can attack three times in one single action. And then at 12th level of fighter, you get another ability score improvement. And we've already boosted our dex a bit. We boosted our strength a bit. So let's boost our health by taking a feat. And we're going to grab the feat tough. This increases our overall health pool by two points per level of this overall build. Then at 13th level of fighter, you get another use of Indomitable for long rest. Then at 14th level of fighter, you get another ability score improvement. And I want to boost up that hand-to-hand -hand combat a little more, so we'll boost our strength by two more points. Then at 15th level of fighter, we get a few more features from being a battle master. We get to choose two more maneuvers, so we'll grab Ambush, allowing you to boost your overall stealth checks or your initiative rolls, which just adds to your overall battle preparation. Additionally, we'll also grab the maneuver Distracting Strike, because you tend to work alone, but in the very rare situation you're going to work with somebody else, Distracting Strike is really going to help, allowing you to expend one of your superiority die to distract a creature and give your allies an opening, so the next attack against that creature is going to be at advantage, as long as that attack's coming from somebody else. Additionally, at 15th level, you get the feature Relentless. So, when you roll initiative and you're all out of superiority dice, you actually regain one. Then 
then at 16th level of fighter, you get another ability score improvement. So we're gonna go ahead and boost your accuracy a little bit more, boosting your dexterity by two points, which will help mostly your ranged attacks, which doesn't really factor into that barbarian multi-class, but it's still really fitting for the character. Then at 17th level of fighter and 20th level overall, you get one more use of Indomitable per long rest, and you get one more use of Action Surge per short or long rest. I've had a member of my community asking for the Punisher for an insanely long time, so I'm happy that I can finally build him out. Let me know what you think about this build in the comments down below, whether you think it sucks or you do something totally differently, I'd love to hear about it. If you want access to the character sheet for this build or any of my other builds, feel free to check out my Patreon linked in the description down below, where you can be just as awesome as all of these people, but especially Bad in Person, Caleb Roan, Isabel Walker, Carcat, Kitsune, Kilon, Lumiere 97, Melendez Robinson, Mikey Zapita, The Dino 21, Omar C, Viral Naravar, Yaksha Senpai, and Zed 13. And then going above and beyond that is all my Dungeon Master level patrons that I actually play D&D with here on YouTube as well as over on Twitch. Benjamin, Brayden Aldridge, Connor Kitchen, Daniel Galvin, Demi Urge, Devin Happy, Eric Wade, Gamestake, Heyo, Kilo Kilo, Michael, Tristan Bennett, and Zalvador. And if you made it all the way to the end of this video, let me know by hitting that like button, and I'll be here hoping you roll at least three nat 20s in your next D&D session, especially if you want to play as Frank Castle, aka The Punisher, in Dungeons & Dragons.